there's a major buzzword in the tech world right now, ray tracing. But what exactly is it and how does it work? While this technology might seem cutting edge, it's actually been around for decades. First introduced by 1968 by Arthur Appel in his groundbreaking paper, Some Techniques for Shading Machine Renderings of Solids. For years, real-time ray tracing was impossible, not because the math was too complex, the core concepts are surprisingly straightforward, but because we lacked the raw computational power. That changed dramatically in 2018 with the release of the first consumer GPU featuring dedicated ray tracing hardware. NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 2080, powered by the revolutionary RT cores. To demystify this magic and show how accessible the core ideas are, we are going to build our own ray tracer from scratch. But that's the twist. We'll do it in the text mode using ASCII art. No advanced graphics APIs, no complex shaders, just terminal characters and fundamental math to illustrate the core principles. We'll break down our ASCII ray tracer's key components, revealing the mathematical beauty behind each operation. The source code is in the description, and we are going to work in C++. The program begins with the inclusion of essential libraries. IOStream for input-output operations, Vector for managing dynamic arrays, CMAT for mathematical functions, and an algorithm for utility functions like STDMAX. Additionally, the Windows-specific header file windows.h is included to manipulate console font settings. A preprocessor directive defined no minmax is added to prevent conflicts between window macros and C++ standard functions. The program defines a vector struct to represent 3D vectors. This provides basic vector operations such as addition, subtraction, scalar multiplication, normalization, and dot product computation. These operations are fundamental for handling points in 3D space and performing lighting calculations. The overloaded operators make the code more readable and expressive when performing vector arithmetic. The ray struct encapsulates the concept of array in 3D space. It consists of two components, an origin point and a direction of vector. Rays are central to ray tracing as they are cast from the camera into the scene to determine what objects are visible at each pixel. The sphere struct represents the objects in our scene. Each sphere is defined by its center position, radius and color. The key functionality here is the intersect method, which determines whether a ray intersects with the sphere using the quadratic formula. This method calculates intersection points and returns the closest positive value, ensuring that only visible intersections are considered. Before we dive in, let's walk through a concrete example to ensure the math is crystal clear. Let's go over the sphere ray intersection. A ray is essentially a point, P, moving in a specific direction, D, from an origin O as time T progresses. A sphere, on the other hand, is simply a set of points that are all the same distance from its center, C, with the distance being the radius R. The radius is squared in the equation because it allows us to eliminate the square root when computing the magnitude, making the calculation simpler. If we plug the ray equation into the sphere equation and do some algebraic rearrangements, we end up with a quadratic equation. This equation gives us three important coefficients, A, which depends on the direction, B, which depends on both direction and the vector from the ray's origin to the sphere center, and C, which depends on the distance between O and C and the sphere radius R. These coefficients help us compute the discriminant, delta, which tells us how many times the ray intersects the sphere. If delta is negative, the ray misses the sphere entirely. If delta is zero, the ray just greases the sphere at a single point. If delta is positive, though, the ray intersects the sphere twice, once when entering and once when exiting. Since we are only interested in the point where the ray first enters the sphere, we take the smaller of the two intersection values, T0 and T1, as long as it's not behind the ray's starting point. The trace function is responsible for determining the color of each pixel by tracing rays through the scene. It loops through all spheres to find the closest intersection point for a given ray. If no intersection occurs, a default background color is returned. Otherwise, it calculates lightning effects at the intersection point using diffuse and specular components. Diffuse lightning is computed based on the angle between the surface normal and the light direction, while specular highlights simulate shininess by reflecting light toward the camera direction. These components are combined with the sphere's color to produce realistic shading. This function adjusts the console for setting to ensure that characters are displayed with the square proportions. This is necessary because non-square fonts can distort ASCII ad output. Using Windows API functions, it has both font size and typeface to achieve consistent rendering. This is Windows specific, so for any other operating system, you should do something different. Main function orchestrates the rendering process. It initializes the console font using set square font. The rendering canvas is configured as 80 times 40 grid. A gradient string is defined to map luminance values to ASCII characters. The scene is set up with a camera position at 003, a light source at minus 555, and three spheres with defined positions, sizes, and colors. 
A nested loop iterates over each pixel in the grid. Screen coordinates are converted into normalized device coordinates. A ray is created from the camera through that pixel. The trace function determines the color at that pixel. The luminance of this color is mapped to an ASCII character using the gradient string. Finally, each character is printed sequentially to create a complete ASCII representation of the scene. So next time you see stunning ray traced game visuals, remember, at their core lies the same fundamental light simulation we just implemented in the terminal. The real magic isn't in complex math, but in decades of hardware evolution that have made these calculations immediate. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and want to see more in the future, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.